build up. And then once we know how much yarn we're using, then we're going to fill up circles. This, oh, I should I should pause it now. Well, except you're all too bright. How many circles do you think it'll fill? Yes. Four, right? Because we all know that it's going to be four. But our students wouldn't necessarily know that. So if you can see the yarn coming down off the top, and here we go, filling up one circle, two circles. I just thought it was a good visual, because where does that four pi r squared come from other than the peeling the orange? How do you think this would work in your class? Interesting. Nah, you don't think so? Well, that would be hard to do. Oh, to actually do it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Just the top and the bottom of the screen. Did they get paused? Well, even if you just talked with them about I'm going to unravel it. stages like you have the styrofoam ball then you start showing them what you're wrapping <coughs> and then you show them the finished product and then you say okay this is going actually have it unraveled and then yeah or have your students unravel them yeah. do you think it would make more sense then because where's otherwise do, do you, you get it to visualize it though for fatigue if like, you do it do it with very fat yarn and you so want to get it nice because if you do cover the skinny, region you'll be doing it forever mm -hmm. right yeah do you think your students believed it when you did the peeling the orange? Do you think that that was good? They knew that, that you needed so many circles, and so, because they knew it was coming from the great circles, so they kind of estimated already how many they thought between three and five. And so by seeing, they did believe it. They're like, oh, yeah, we can see it's more than this, less than that. And you know, um, sometimes students have difficulty with the concept of surface area particularly on a curved surface, if, they're, if they've been finding surface areas of rectangular solids, they're used to that being a flat rectangular uh, shape. And so it, uh, it really helps with just the concept of surface area in, in a shape that's different than you may have yeah. considered before. Yeah, just try and unpeel it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What about the volume of a sphere? I want to see which one you pull up. I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. You have that to look forward to. Okay, skip to video two, one. Okay. Four over three pi r cube gives you the volume of the sphere. But where does the formula come from? Is this the one you've seen? First, we'll draw a no, perfect sphere. No, it's actually, and fill in they the have a, and it's soundless. They have a sphere and a cylinder that have the same diameter, same radius, and then they fill up the, sphere with water and pour it into the cylinder oh. and you guesstimate where they think and then so it's two thirds. This this is a little bit different so because this is one 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 one. Do you, do you understand where they're at at this point? Yeah. Are we okay with this? Yeah. Okay. Now let's quickly show that the height of all the pyramids that make up the sphere is actually equal to the radius. So our equation becomes 1 over 3 area of base times radius. And we will simplify this equation by replacing radius with r and area of the base with b. We will be numbering the bases, so we start with base 1, and our equation is base 1 r over 3. So in order to find the volume of the sphere, we simply have to calculate the volume of the pyramid and add them together, giving us a simple formula. So lining up the pyramids, we start from the beginning, and we have volume of the sphere is equal to base 1 r over 3 plus base 2 r over 3 plus base 3 r over 3. And we will continue this process up until the last pyramid. Now, we don't know how many pyramids we have, so we just let base n r over 3 simply represent the last 
pyramid. So having added up the pyramids together, we have this complete simple formula to work with. So next, we will use algebra and begin by factoring out a 1 over 3. And we will also factor out the radius, giving us r over 3 times the sum of all bases. So now let's concentrate on the sum of all bases. And remember, these are the bases of the pyramids that make up the sphere. And as you can see, the bases actually form the surface area of the sphere. So the sum of all bases is equal to the surface area, which is equal to 4 pi r squared. Now, a quick explanation for why the surface area is 4 pi r squared is first we'll look at our sphere and take its largest possible circumference. With that circumference, we'll make a circle. And now, the amazing fact is the surface area of the sphere is equal to exactly four times the area of the circle. The area of each circle is pi r squared. Combine them together, and we get four pi r squared. So now let's go back to our simple formula and replace the sum of all bases with 4 pi r squared. Now we combine the r's together to get r cubed, and now we simply rearrange the equation to get 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So 4 over 3 pi r cubed gives you the volume of any sized sphere that exists. compared to the it truly was like a less than a one minute video when they poured the water from the sphere into the cylinder and they saw it was two thirds and we had been working with the volume of a cylinder so two thirds times whatever our formula is for the volume of a cylinder and then I would it was just it was magical it's like oh and then we just showed how we rearranged that right. equation yeah it, it's just that mm -hmm. That's probably a lot more mathematical, but my I would bet you any of my eighth graders could still tell you it's two thirds times the volume of a cylinder. Which is because they saw that. In fact, mm -hmm. like this year, I want to have them do it. Yeah. If and I it is amazing cylinder. those visual images. You you see it once, and it's with yeah. you. It's with you. And they got to guess and everything. So there's that whole little contest. So they really. And when they wrote on the test that the formula is two thirds times, and then they filled in uh -huh. pi r squared h, I was like, it was just interesting though because yeah. they really got it. Yeah, they go over it again in tenth grade, most right? Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So it'd be kind of yeah. nice to show the the limiting factor there. Right. To, you know, yeah. To do it that mm -hmm. way because a lot of my kids have never seen the pouring the water, mm -hmm. and I like doing yeah. that too. Plus, yeah. it's fun because you can yeah. do it over some kid's head. <laughs> Just for no, let him sweat it out a little yeah. bit. Will it actually? Your favorite student, your favorite yeah. student, yeah. the volunteers to come on. <laughs> you but know, they they use clips too. Yeah. With water. yeah. One yeah. thing about the clip that that Mary showed that uh, honestly I hadn't seen this before. I love that um, those little picks that they pulled out were little pyramids. And they do know how to find the volume of that pyramid. And so then dealing with what is the base of those, those pyramids all put together, um, conceptually, it, it's, it's another angle, so to speak, on this whole idea. Instead of just cool. telling them, oh, just trust me, it's four thirds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's OK to see things more than one way. Yeah. I mean, we, ha we do have to be careful, because time is Time is important, but um, at all there for you like that. Right. So yeah. At least you can yes. get the concept going, because otherwise, if it's just procedure, mm -hmm. it's gone mm -hmm. yeah. after the test. Or to know that it came from somewhere. Right? Yeah. And there is a. a was it just a miracle? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't just a miracle. Well, the history of it too. Yeah. Yeah. What's on Earth? Well, 
films the multiple representations. Like maybe yeah. start with that video first. Then Do you guys remember this one? Yes, and now the yeah. other one. Because my students haven't had a pyramid, so that oh, okay. way, okay, mine that, have the date. Mm -hmm. It starts with volume of a, of a cylinder, and then uh -huh. we move on to the sphere. Yes. Yeah. And so it just it has that nice natural connection. Natural mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's cool. But revisiting the concept then in 10th grade. Yeah. 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 And I've seen other calculus, yes. too. I mean, yes. doing, yes. doing a rectangular approximation methods. Mm -hmm. Limiting the, the thick or the width of the rectangle. Yes. Making it smaller and smaller, and the limit of this end goes to infinity. You start throwing that in there. Oh. And to <laughs> see some of those ideas conceptually before yeah. we worry about the numeric right. side of it can, is powerful, I think, for kids. And kids are capable of doing that sooner than the, the time they enroll in right. formal. Right, like an intuitive idea. Yeah, That's yes. Awesome. If yeah. you don't know Common Core, yes. you're doing what you always did, which yes. is a little bit of everything, because you're afraid you'll miss something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we were specifically told, your figures are, boom, please do not, please, just flat out, do mm -hmm. not do other figures. Okay. And, okay. yeah, that was yes. kind of our result. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but not about the geometry of chocolate. No, no. <laughs> You've intrigued us by that name. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I came across it. I don't. I don't remember exactly where. Nigel oh, Nisbet. What a name. How'd you like yeah, that? Nigel Nisbet. Oh, <laughs> did you hear it? Nigel Nisbet. You're gonna be a right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, he has. Oh, yeah. He's great. Our first day as a high school math teacher here in the U.S. It was a day I'll never forget. Armed with six weeks of training and a little prior teaching experience at an all-girls prep school in rural England. I believe that was ready. Ready to change the world, ready to inspire the students, ready to take these kids on a journey through math they would remember for the rest of their lives. And then I stood in front of my first class. <laughs> trying to deliver a lecture about solving linear equations and all I could see were puzzled and distant looks on the faces of 42 students. And as the day wore on, reality set in. <laughs> 